Oh, baby. You ready? Okay. How's the battery? Oh, we're jumping right into questions? No. No. Like, no. Okay, no, I'm going to intro. I was like, wow. Yeah, what is that? Jiggle. Do, do, jiggle it. Do. Can we get this thing started? We got I'm kids nervous. that are preoccupied. Yeah, we do. Okay, TV show. ready? I feel like I have a short torso. So I do we too. Have this whole I do too. She already. sits so tall. It's short so torso, tall. man. I'm down here like this. Like, hey guys, this is my mom. Well, hello, you guys. Welcome, Welcome to the channel. <laughs> that was a good foot. Is that it? Welcome All right, back. Should we take it again? So take two. Take two. Welcome back. And then it's. Well, hello, you guys. Welcome back. back. To, to our, our channel. channel. <laughs> right, so channel number one. Woo! Welcome to a, a fun, special couples Q and A edition. Whatever. Have you guys ever With heard the of the Earls? Earls if you haven't, you need to. Absolutely. This is sweet Rachel. This is sweet Harold, also known as <laughs> H and Red. H yeah. and Red. Yeah. H yeah, and Red. Those are nicknames. So I thought that was cute. Yeah. Um, okay. So we're gonna do a little Q and A session, and y'all know. Fuzz all on your fingers. We have, we have dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, we're trying to do this Q&A while True is taking his nap, which he's already been taking for like 45 minutes. Yeah. And the kids are watching a little something downstairs, so we're going to see how many questions we can get through. Make sure you watch this whole come. video, because I guarantee you at some point, a kid's going to come running up in here and crash the whole scene. Right? <laughs> and and also, voice. this is part one, and yeah. part two will be on yep. y'all's channel. Yep. Yes. So everything will be in the description to make sure you go click on their video. Yes. Subscribe and if channel. you're coming here from their video, hi. Hey. <laughs> Welcome. Okay, first question. How much money do you have? Oh. Uh, okay. <laughs> Monopoly money. Just, In just, what? Just, what? Um, I was like, what kind of money? Crypto. <laughs> the crypto. <laughs> um, the other one. Gold, silver. Oh, yes. First question. Uh -oh. Ooh. Uh -oh. This one is more about relationships. Okay. First question is. How to not feel disconnected from each other when you're waiting for marriage before sleeping together? Ooh, wow. Oh, I'll take a crack at this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love so people little, were saying, I, I don't think I ever felt disconnected. A little, little context. context. Yeah, I think so, a little context. So we did wait until we were married. And um, we were long distance. We were long yeah. distance the whole time. We are so, in college, right? Yep, so yeah. I was at West Point up in New York. I was doing like the army cadet life and she yeah. was at Florida State. Mm -hmm. And we were totally long distance and we never had sex and we waited until we were married, yeah. honestly, by the grace of God. But what's really fascinating is, so for me, I'm very much like a physical touch guy. Mm -hmm. um, that's my love language. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, it's like, yes. but like it's like an AA meeting. I am Harold and I'm physical touch. I think, so like kind of on a more serious thing, I think that like by waiting, what was interesting is it made me like even more attracted to you. Mm. You know? And so I think people see it the other way around as if yeah. you kind of like divulge a lot yeah. Yeah. up front. Mm -hmm. You respect more. But yeah, it's like, not only did I respect you more, yeah. I think that I felt actually more connected to you because I, I felt like drawn to you even more. And so I think yeah. that it actually made that distance, it pulled us closer together, right? Um, oh, I love that. No, you got wow, it. we need to cross it, babe. I didn't I did make it. Notes. Thing. I saw <laughs> a moment happening over here. Y'all like, know that Chad and I were long distance as well, but I feel like in that distance, we felt more connected because all we had was communication. Yes. yes. So it's like yes. everything mm -hmm. is yeah. communicating, telling stories, getting to know each other. Mm -hmm. And while there wasn't that like physical intimacy, there was so much intimacy and in like the communication yeah. and just like, wow, the depth, I, the depth of the like depth. knowing. Because I feel like when you go exactly. straight to physical intimacy, yeah. you, you don't lose that, yeah. Yeah. You lose that like, mm -hmm. connection of communication yeah. and like being best friends. What was one of the harder aspects of long distance? Maybe you've shared it before, but um, whenever you get around each other yeah. after not being around each other, yeah, the temptation. you just want to, uh, so I actually have a weird analogy <laughs> that kind of parallels what he said, even though it was cut out. I don't know if this works, but it was just something I was thinking about as you guys were sharing is that if you're like, say you're like coming home from work and you're starving, you haven't eaten all day. And so you see all these fast food restaurants on the side of the street and you can just pull over oh, and get yeah. fast food super quick. Yeah. Or you can stop off at a grocery store and buy really, really like high nutritional groceries or food mm -hmm. and then go home and take time to prepare these things yeah. for something yeah. that's actually 
actually going to sustain your body. Yeah. But, if you, but if, deep, huh? if you go yeah. for the super quick fast food options, you're actually getting like a cheap substitute. Yeah. And, and it's so, how you always feel bad after eating the Big Mac. Yeah. 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 And, and so there's like no nutritional value. <laughs> yeah. And so I would encourage you just to know that connection is so much more than just that emotional high you feel with that person. There's so yeah. much more depth there. Mm-hmm. Um, and so while you're waiting, I think just realizing that you're, you're doing something that's going to help you have a better connection later on. 100%. And, and that's something that's personal to me too, yeah. because you know, like all of us, it's just like, Oh wow, we could just do that right now. And we feel yeah. awesome. But like, yeah. no, every time after you eat fast food, you're like, I, I need like to take it. a nap. I feel like crap. Yeah. And, or if you go and actually take time and enjoy the waiting process for sure. Yeah. yeah. And so, I think a big thing you mentioned was like the intentionality. Yes. Piece, right. I think yeah. if we weren't like intentional in how we communicated and, and yeah. setting clear expectations and boundaries and saying, Hey, we want to go to Whole Foods versus, you know, like McDonald's is the only way that we kind of like were able to do that, I think. Right. Or else it's so easy to give into like, well, let's just get the quick bite to eat. Yeah. Also it's exciting if you wait, you know, I was, I was thinking now another analogy, gosh, of like Christmas, right. You know, it's like there's the anticipation there, the build up and it's this big, beautiful celebration. Whereas what if we're just kind of always like, oh, here's this or that, you know what I mean? You don't get yeah. that big, beautiful thing. There's expectancy in marriage. Yeah. Expectancy does wonders for people's heart and their yeah. longing. Because yeah. yeah. it's like in the same way we're expectant of heaven, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, and we're, we're hoping toward the future, yeah. you know, and it versus just dreading what's around the corner. There's like, yeah. there's a, there's a joy that pulls us forward yeah. and we don't feel like we're lacking now, but yeah. we're excited for the future. Yeah. Should I find another question? question? One. <laughs> We're at forty-one percent in twelve minutes. In. Okay, hey off to a good start. It's a good start, but it's just it's funny. This always this is literally us. us. We're like we'll what? do thirty-five minute Q and A's and we we'll answer two, two questions. questions. Yes, the and worst. then we'll say rapid fire, and it's not. So, um, this is interesting. Oh my word! I want to be careful with how we answer this, but okay. okay. How to reject someone in a godly way? Oh. oh, wow. Yeah. That's an interesting question. That is yeah. interesting. I was going to say not respond to their text, but that's probably Don't not. That's the opposite. Don't go that she ghosted me. Ooh, really? Totally. How did that go down? Just, it was, it, she was I going through a lot of emotional. Let's be honest. It sounds like they worked out okay for you. They worked out. Yeah, they worked out. I'm going to write a bestseller. <laughs> How to get out of the friend zone. A success story. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> but what would y'all say? Yes, tell us the correct answer. the only answer. person that had to reject someone was you, right? Because remember when we met? We, we were kind did. of talking to someone else. Oh, yeah. oh do you remember that? Do you, do you remember, remember that? Do you remember her name? Should we, <laughs> <Do you remember laughs> that? Should we open that up? Did she do a good What's, job? I don't know. No, so it's interesting. I've always kind of believed. All right, all right, all right. Let me. Do you remember that time you were talking uh-huh. to someone else? All right, let, let the man speak here. So I've always felt pretty strong. I mean, like I would just kind of know who the person was. And, you know, I, I was dating someone casually. And then when I met Rachel, I was like, done. This head is over it. heels. Like literally like, yeah. you know, like our love story. Like totally yes. fell head over heels super fast. And for me, it was like super quick, super easy. And I texted the girl and I told her the entire thing. I said, hey, like I enjoy spending time with you, but I honestly think I found the girl that I'm going to marry. And I'm sorry that oh. it doesn't work out. I literally just told her that I literally think I found the person. <laughs> honesty. And I just texted it. And it was just like, you know, and yeah. we weren't like, yeah, we weren't like boyfriend, girlfriend. So it wasn't yeah. like I needed to see her in person or call her. It was just yeah. like. And it was also long, long distance. Long distance. So, so it was just long. like, a, and I just sent her a long text and was like. Let me tell you, this, you know, this is what happened to me. And yeah. we met and I'm done. And you weren't like dating, dating. You took yeah, it. No, yeah. We were like, we were like kind of yeah. talking, you know, yeah. like kind of yeah. like a, a yep. thing. The yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. It was like a. This honesty. is, this is one I haven't shared on YouTube yet, but after the whole situation with Jack, cause he called me out for like ghosting him. Yeah. He like made me have a conversation with him. So like I ended up having a conversation with Jack. I respect that, myself. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so like I ended up having to tell him like what all I was going through and why I wasn't ready for a relationship. And it made me like realize like, oh, like that is not the way to handle it, Tori. Mm-hmm. And so later on, I had gone on just a couple dates with someone and it was very similar like, oh, this is not my person. But I had, mm-hmm. like there was nothing wrong with the person. Mm-hmm. Great guy, yep. love yep. the Lord. Like yep. it, just not wasn't it. it just wasn't yeah. it. And so I did the respectful thing. I called, have loved getting to know you. To be honest, I just don't see this like moving forward. Mm -hmm. And what had happened, what had happened was he wanted to go to church with me. And my church family was like family. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm like, that and that's like feels... introducing him to family. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like introducing, like, like, and I was like, yeah. I can't do that at all. Yeah. And then when Chad and I started dating, I like couldn't wait for oh, him to like go to church yeah. and meet everybody. And, and that for me, like, 
when we were, I was like, holy cow, like we weren't mm -hmm. even boyfriend, girlfriend yet. And I was so excited mm -hmm. for everyone to meet him. But I do remember having to have, but it was taken very well. Like, thank you so much for being up front with me. Yeah. I appreciate, like that was really mm -hmm. respectful and it was handled very I nicely. And I love like how intentional you were with things. We had our pastor, Pastor Ben, actually said with dating is to be like very intentional and upfront. Yeah. And like, I respect that with you is like, you were in the friend zone for a while, but like you weren't afraid to be like, here is what I see and here's what I mm -hmm. want out of this. And like to share that with you. And yeah. I think yeah. so many yeah. people don't do that. And they kind of live in this like yeah. unknown world. Yeah, the wishy washy what's going and, on. And it's never, it's never about like saying, whenever I had that conversation with her, it wasn't about like, why don't you want to be with me? Yeah. It was not yeah. that at all. It was yeah. that we were having a good time, things yeah. were progressing, and then you disappeared for Stop lack of better. Yeah. yeah. And then it was just like, I value myself to just want to know like what, what happened. Cause I'm not like, soul ties are a real thing. We talk about it on our channel a lot. When you build emotional connections with people, mm -hmm. you, you build emotional bonds. And then if that just gets ripped away, mm -hmm. you know, it can be really hard, especially if you're someone like me who gets attached, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to just kind of, for my own healing process, I just kind of want, and so part two of the answer to this question, like I think part one is just really respecting yourself and like understanding like, Hey, if you don't want to like waste your time if you think you found say the right person right yeah. but then you also don't want to waste that person's time either yes. mm -hmm. but you want to do it in a completely like how would you want someone to tell you yeah. i think that's my best answer is that mm -hmm. you know do it to others and yeah. if if you if someone were to kind of break things off with you how would you want them to do it in a way that edifies mm -hmm. you that leaves you encouraged mm -hmm. and not like you're less than yeah. Yeah. because I feel like a lot of the times whenever someone breaks up with somebody, we think it's, Oh, I wasn't worthy of that person's love versus you just weren't really that compatible. Yeah. And so I think there's a big difference where people receive it. Like I lost a super bowl, mm -hmm. but no, you're, you're, you're playing two different sports, yeah. Yeah. you know? And so it's not like a fair feeling to have to feel less than whenever someone doesn't see what your hopeful spouse will, will see. Yeah. And it's like that very, cliche line of like sometimes rejection is God's redirection because I do feel like when you're the one on the receiving and it's like oh my gosh I've been rejected I feel so terrible like why am I not enough and when you flip the narrative to be like oh well this person rejected me like they're probably not my person yes and I need to find peace in yes. that knowing yes. that like I'll find my person. So this is an interesting one. And I'm going to put Rachel on the hot spot because she hasn't really answered that much yet. I know. <laughs> you guys have so much to say. I'm like, is that my okay. car red? I, no, uh, okay. I'm like, I, if I keep going, we're going to talk about the same question for 45 minutes. <laughs> You're the smart one. No I know. Else. I'm trying to help you guys out here. So can a Christian girl let a Christian guy know that she likes him because sometimes maybe a guy is afraid. So can, yeah. can a Christian girl make the first move is essentially what she's saying. I don't see why not. I think it's just the communicating. It all comes back to communicating um, because I, I feel like if you don't, it, then you get stuck in that wishy-washy place and you your heart could get hurt. You know, I, yeah. I would rather bring it up and if the guy is like, no, like I'm just not interested, then I know who yes. you want, you yeah. know, to protect your heart too. Cause yeah. just to get stuck in the waiting would be, yeah. I think more painful. Yeah. And I feel like too, like if you are going to make the first move and like at least like just, or having a conversation about like, Hey, there's something here. Like, yeah. am I reading this right? Or am yes. I not? But then still letting the man like pursue you after that. Yeah, yeah. I'm not you know saying I mean? just like randomly yeah. go up there and yes. like make a physical move yes. or something like that, yeah. but to start a conversation, yes. I mean, anybody can start a conversation. I mean, because yeah. girls do get caught yeah. in that like, I think he's into me and then they like think about what they the future is. They internalize it so it. much yeah. and you can quickly get to an unhealthy mm. spot. And so yeah. I would just say to, in order to protect yourself and yeah, just address it and be like, Hey, what's going on here? So I saw a few questions in here that were all kind of similar. Okay. And I can't find them all right now, but the, the essential thing is, is number one, is it okay? And number two, if it is okay, how do you handle it? If you and your spouse are different, if you like different things, if you operate differently. And so how have you guys handled differences? I would first say it depends on your level of differences, right? You know, because yeah. there's like your core beliefs. Yeah. You, uh, I would caution you if those yeah. are not aligned, you know. But I would also say as long as your like core beliefs are the same, differences are good. Yes. Yeah. I'm like a fan of differences. Like yeah. if you're all the same on everything, then like what is there to talk about? What is there to like? Yeah, I love. Learn. I love that we have 
like our core things are the same and like how we pursue God. And Mm -hmm. we've talked about this some where like, I love that like I'm running towards God and I can look over and see my spouse like running in the same direction, you know? And getting like some of those core things right. But after that, like we're different in a lot of fronts on a lot of things. And I love that. It makes life so fun and so interesting. That like iron sharpening iron. Certainly. Yeah. Yeah. And you always get a different perspective. And like, I actually think it's made a more holistic and deeper relationship. Yeah. Well, and too. Why are you laughing at me for? <laughs> no, I'm just yeah. admiring you speak. Oh. This is cute. <laughs> we we go. Yeah. I'm like, no, I'm like we, the no, kids are we way go. Go. Out of here. <laughs> we, gotta, we gotta go. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, uh-huh. We should do a progression. That would be funny. Okay. But something we were talking about off camera that's so funny is Rachel and Chad grew up so similar, like yeah. in the way they were parented and just like lifestyles, etc. And then Harold and I grew up so similar. Crazy. Like parents got divorced at the same time. Like when we were in college, yeah. just went through the same like kind of rebellious season and then going back to the Lord and like how it's so cool. Mm -hmm. to have the the differences in the marriage because it's like, okay, I was raised this way. Mm -hmm. You were raised this way. How do we find the balance when it comes to Mm -hmm. raising, well, they're currently raising kids, but our like future kids and what that kind of looks like. And Mm -hmm. so I think it's so powerful to be different because you have more to like learn Learn from from and bring to the the table. table. If we were raised the exact same way, we don't know any different. You know, we don't know what it looks like to, you know, have that on the other side. I think it's a humbling and sobering reminder to know that the world does not revolve around you. It doesn't revolve (laughs) around me or them. And I think we can get so sucked into our own, like, feelings that it's just like we need to date someone who loves everything we love and talks the way we talk and yeah. likes the things we like and wants the yeah. things that we well, want and you make your own list that it has to be that yeah it has to be this whole yeah, thing exactly. and it's just like yeah. well, wait a second what if that person feels the exact same way and you don't fit into their worldview yeah. yeah it's just like relationships are not meant to be self-serving yeah they're, they're not meant to where you're walking through a buffet and you're just grab all my analogies are about food so like I did. I had a sandwich. Oh, okay. Yeah. But I just think it's important for people to know that, yeah. you know, this, I hate to say it, this is not always about you. And now yeah. granted, when you get into a relationship, it should be a smart decision, yeah. but it's also smart to practice mm-hmm. saying, wow, that person has a different point of view. And maybe yeah. I could really learn from that. Maybe yeah. it would make me better if I could learn to get along with someone who maybe disagrees with me. Yeah. Like yeah. there's a lot of fruit to realizing that there's so many different perspectives, there's so many different mm-hmm. worldviews, and we can like really honor and cherish people yeah. inside of that versus yeah. just trying to fit people into our own little box based on what makes us feel comfortable. Totally. So I don't, just, think, I don't think you even have to necessarily end up loving someone else's differences because yeah. you know it comes down to even, oh, yeah, there's, there's some things I don't love. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> but you can still grow from them. Like I'm thinking little things like you know the trash or you know the way yeah. you clean or. or or yeah. whatever is different and those yeah. can be hard and attention yeah. point but can also be what a way that babe? no <laughs> <both of them. laughs> attention point. But, but a way that you can grow in your patience and even like your love for someone you're like oh i'm i'm a little bit frustrated here but i love my spouse so much you know and like we can like work through this and how to communicate through it the this first is the interruption this is the moment this is the moment so, so last question before we jump to the part two over in their, on their channel, don't forget it's in the description. Um, hello cutie. Why? You want so, to come sit? The question is a simple one. Oh my <laughs> goodness. Hello. Hey Batman. Uh, I am Monster You do. You monster Jam, Monster Jam, Monster Jam! <laughs> um, he can go under. He can go under. Okay, um, last question. So, simple question. What's the best relationship advice that's ever existed in the history of humankind? These are Batman dirt. For for marriage or for relationship? These are Batman dirt wheels. That's a pretty good one. These are Batman dirt wheels. Uh, It can be for marriage or relationships. Obviously, people are in different all stages. And so... Maybe one for relationships, one for marriage. I would say, so this applies, I think, to both marriage and relationships, is that you need to pursue your significant other every single day. Yeah, because love is a choice. Because love is a choice, yeah. right? And we got that advice really early on. So like some mm-hmm. of our story, um, you know, my parents... Hey, mommy. This is like a serious moment here, bud. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Yeah, you can totally mine. This is the story of our life. I was going to say, like, my parents, uh, you know, we talked about getting a divorce. Yeah. And they just kind of fell out of love. And they were amazing parents. And they loved me and my sister so much. And they yeah. still do. The best parents totally. we could ask for. But they didn't pursue each other. And mm. that happened, like, right after we met. And so we saw kind of the fall out of that. And we had some very close mentors that have a good marriage. And they said, they told us that advice. And that has been, like, the best advice is to, like, yeah. be intentional, to, like, make time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. and like pursue each other and especially with kids mm-hmm. especially with long distance you have to like yeah. really really pursue that and can't get kind of complacent of like oh we're married or yeah we just kind of go along with life my cousin had told us she said you always put your marriage before your kids and i yeah. remember when i first heard that i was like what you know because looking yeah. back i was like no what? i know my parents put me first you what? know like almost that like selfishness I think Mm -hmm. I was like I liked that I came first you know Mm -hmm. and like the kids would want that but then I've realized the best thing for my kids is when yeah to have a healthy marriage for them to look up to and you know to be raised in a healthy family life and all of that so it's it's hard to wrap your mind around, but so I love do, it. do you have a separate one, or are you just piggybacking off that one? Oh, we have just like. He's saying your answer wasn't good. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not saying. No, I was saying I didn't know because Tori said we want one. one. Chat. <laughs> I did not say that. He's out. These guys are chatty candies today. I'm just trying. Oh, to chat and No, because remember Tori said I want one for marriage and one for okay. dating. Okay, okay. So that was, yeah, yeah, one so, for dating, one for so, dating. I but everything is, comes down to communication yes, it does. you know that's dating that's marriage that's when you have a family like yeah. the root of all of it is communication mm-hmm. um, and I'm thankful that because we were long distance it made us focus on I our marriage because communication yeah. Yeah. exactly we know how to communicate and knowing how to communicate well instead of anger you yeah. know yeah. a lot yeah. of people when they communicate when it's gonna combust well, no, no, here's the thing the is that point. long yes. distance exposes all of the little things when you're yeah. in person i think that sometimes and this will be kind of the advice that i give is like in person you can smooth things over just because you're in person so yeah, like you look kind of flirt right with them. Yeah, yeah you kind of go have fun mm-hmm. and it kind of breezes yeah. over but you never really address the crux of what was happening yeah. with long distance if you don't you address it that's like a problem yeah. and I think that still applies even when you're in person. So whether you're married or whether you see each other in person is that if you don't address it and you try to smooth it over, it will create thoughts that later on get deeper. So I would say don't let anything build up. Yeah. You know, like don't let it get to that boiling point as soon as you know thing becomes the biggest thing. Becomes the biggest thing. And we're guilty of that. I mean a hundred percent is is address it. Say, hey, you know, like this is what I'm thinking, maybe you didn't mean it this way, you know, can we just talk about it and Open dialogue. Yeah. I love that. There you go, Chad. Got your second answer. Well, listen, I didn't mean that in no way at all. I just, I just wanted to make sure that you were being heard too. It's okay. Jeez. Everyone is. We got a lot of voices in here. So. Awesome. Can you say bye bye? Bye bye. Uh, bye. bye. So go check out their video. We love them. Go subscribe to their channel. They're really, really sweet people. Yes. And honestly, you guys are doing wildly cool things. With some <laughs> wildly crazy boys. <laughs> right? Three boys. Do 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 do